The lynx and the bobcat are two of the most interesting cats that live in Europe and North America. People have been interested in these wild cats for hundreds of years because of how they look and how well they hunt. Whether you're interested in animals or just want to know more about these elusive ones, you can't deny that the lynx and bobcat deserve our attention. But they face several threats to their survival, including habitat loss and fragmentation, climate change, and hunting. In this video, we'll take a closer look at the lynx and bobcat, exploring their physical and behavioral characteristics, their habitats, and the challenges they face in the wild. So make sure to watch the video till the end, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also press the bell icon for regular updates. Let's get started. First, let me tell you, what is a lynx? Actually, lynxes are medium-sized, solitary wildcats that live in the forests of Europe and Asia. Their name derives from a Greek term that means to shine, since their eyes are shiny. However, what makes them stand out are the big tufts of hair above their ears and their short, stumpy tails. Lynxes come in four different kinds. Even though the Iberian lynx is smaller, it was long assumed to be the same species as the Eurasian lynx. Both live in Western Europe and Central Asia. The Canada lynx and the bobcat are the same species, but many people confuse them. Actually, when the European lynx migrated to North America, it was named bobcat. So generally speaking, they are from the same ancestor. Now let's talk about how the lynx exactly looks like. Appearance of lynx. Lynxes are usually light brown, red, rusty, or gray with dark markings that help them blend in with their surroundings. In frigid places, their fur gets thicker in the winter to keep them warm. They can be identified by the black hair on the tips of their ears, the fur around their cheeks that looks like a beard, their lengthy legs, and their short, stubby tails with a black tips. Scientists don't know for sure why their ears are tufty, although they may work like antennae to help them hear sense movement above their heads, or just keep their ears warm. The bodies of lynx are made for living in the snow. Their lengthy legs help them walk through the deep snow, and the hair on the bottom of their big webbed paws keeps them warm and keeps them from slipping. By hitting the ground with their toes stretched out, these paws assist the animal walk on top of the snow, making them the ultimate snowshoes. Bobcats, on the other hand, don't have to go through deep snow to get snowshoe hairs, thus their feet are smaller and don't have hairy soles. The bobcat also has tiny tufts on its ears, and the underside of its tail is white. Hunting strategy of lynx for its prey. The lynx pursues its victim, gets close without being seen, and then attacks quickly. Large animals that the lynx hunts have clean bite marks on their necks, and the lynx normally starts eating at the haunch. Unless it is disturbed, the lynx will normally cover its kill and go return to it. Lynx employs more than just stalking and waiting for their prey to come to them to catch it. One of these is caching, which is where they put food to eat later. They often hide their kills under snow or leaves to keep them fresh and keep other animals from getting to them. Still hunting is another way that lynx look for prey. This means staying still and waiting for prey to approach close enough to catch. Lynx are patient hunters who can wait for hours in one place until the opportune time to strike. When you look closely, you can see bite marks on the throat and trachea of an animal that was killed by a lynx. When the throat and trachea are cut open, tiny holes formed by the lynx's sharp teeth can be seen in some dead animals. The canines of a lynx are about 25 to 35 millimeters apart. If the lynx can't reach the throat of its victim, it could sometimes grab the rear of its neck. The lynx, on the other hand, never bites its prey in the lower back as the wolverine does. The lynx's claws sometimes leave markings on the stomach or sides of the animal it kills. When a lynx kills a person, it's rare to find signs of fight. The lynx normally eats its victim from the legs and shoulders up leaving the head, the top of the neck, the lungs, and the stomach alone. The lynx doesn't normally keep its kill, but for a short while, it might conceal part of it. If a lynx gets startled, it may leave its prey nearly intact. However, each individual is very diverse in this way. Studies show that a lynx normally eats all the edible components of its kill. However, because of the way its teeth and skull are made, it cannot crush bones like other large carnivores can. Praise of Canadian lynx. 
the snowshoe hare is an important part of the Canadian lynx's life. Estimates say that this species makes up as much as 97% of the Canadian lynx's diet. This makes a cycle of prey and predator, tying the two species together and keeping their populations in balance. Ducks, moles, red squirrels, voles, young dolls, sheep, mule deer, and caribou are some of the other things the Canadian lynx eats. Lynx are sneaky hunters. They wait for their prey on certain pathways or in ambush beds and then attack. They can see prey in the dark from as far away as 250 feet. Canadian lynx shuns people and even stays away from each other unless they are mating. From March to early April, they breed, and after two to three months of pregnancy, they have one to eight kittens in logs, stumps, or tangles of plants. Only the females take care of their young, whom they start teaching how to hunt when they are a few months old. The young leave home with their mother until the next spring, when they may mate. Reproduction Lynx are mostly solitary animals that make their homes under downed trees, in thick foliage, or abandoned burrows. During mating season, which is towards the end of winter or the beginning of spring. Females only mate with one male. As they fight over a girl, men will scream at each other. About two months after mating, females have a litter of one to four kittens that they nurture on their own without any help from the male. Researchers have found that young lynx grow autonomously at 10 months and leave to find their territory at 20 months by employing video traps and tagging kittens. Females' territories are smaller than males, and they don't wander as far from home. There have been accounts of mother and daughter hunting together. When a young lynx has set up its territory, it is ready to have its kittens. Threats to Survival The Iberian lynx is listed as endangered by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. The Eurasian lynx, the Canada lynx, and the bobcat, on the other hand, are listed as of least concern. They are in danger because their habitats are being destroyed or broken up. After all, people trap them for their valuable fur, and because things like disease and climate change are hurting their prey. The Canadian lynx is the least endangered animal right now. Its population size goes up and down almost exactly in sync with that of the snowshoe hare every 10 years. But both species are at risk when the weather changes. As temperatures rise and warmer seasons get longer, Canadian lynx and snowshoe hares move to find colder conditions. This makes the ranges of both species smaller, which will hurt both populations in the long run. Conservation and reintroduction initiatives have been able to stop the species from going extinct. For example, the Eurasian lynx has been successfully brought back to France, Italy, Austria, Germany, and Switzerland, among other places in Europe. In Spain and Portugal, the number of Iberian lynxes has expanded by a factor of 10. But there are still problems with these. Three pairs of Eurasian lynxes were brought back to Croatia in 1973, 70 years after the last native species had died out. At first, it seemed like a good idea. But the population was hurt by too much inbreeding. And now there are fresh programs to bring in new people to add genetic variety to the population. These challenges can have serious impacts on their population. We must take steps to maintain these beautiful animals and their habitats. We can do this by protecting and restoring natural landscapes, resolving disputes between people and animals, and limiting our impact on the environment. By working together, we can help make sure that lynxes and bobcats will be around for future generations. So that was all about for today. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video. Until then, take care.